So how do bacteria become resistant? What we've got here is footage from Harvard University of a bacterial colony growing across an agar plate, along which are sections with increasing concentrations of antibiotics. So watch what happens. This is the bacteria growing on a section with no antibiotics, growing and dividing, so far so good. It meets the junction to the first section where there's a low concentration of antibiotic. The antibiotic initially prevents the bacteria from spreading any further. But as it's only a low dose, it doesn't kill off all the bacteria and some invade. Now, bacteria grow and divide at an extremely fast rate. A new generation is produced every 30 minutes or so. And as they divide, random mutations take place. And sometimes that mutation can lead to a resistance to a particular antibiotic. And that's exactly what's happening here. You've got a mutated strain now that's resistant to this antibiotic and is able to grow quite happily across the agar. Then the spreading bacteria reach a section with 30 times the antibiotic dose. It stops them in their tracks, but not for long. A lot of it is killed off, but again, some of it continues to grow and divide. And most importantly, the mutated strain of bacteria, the one that's resistant to this antibiotic, is happily growing and dividing across this section of antibiotics. Initially, only killing some of the bacteria allows a stronger strain to survive. And that's how bacteria can evolve to become resistant. Now, it's going to happen naturally to a certain extent, but it can be greatly sped up when people take repeated courses or they take antibiotics for the wrong reason or they don't finish the course. This effect is not just limited to antibiotics. Anything that kills bacteria can put pressure on the bugs to evolve resistance. Antibacterial hand washes, gels and cleaning products might not be all that great because they too can encourage bacterial resistance. And it's not only in humans that bacteria are becoming resistant to antibiotics. So talk me through a scenario where, you know, it's not an organic farm like this, animals are in close contact with each other. Yeah. Do a lot of farmers give antibiotics on a regular basis? They seem to need to. If you're trying to produce your meat really cheaply, if you've got a lot of animals uh, on concrete in housing inside, then the opportunities for disease spread are much greater. In situations like that, antibiotics might be given to a whole herd to prevent an infection from spreading. And so, just as we overuse antibiotics in human medicine, there is a risk of overuse in large-scale farming too, as farmers try to meet the demand for low-cost food. I made a new friend. Oh, yes! <laughs> so, healthy pigs, there's healthy no pigs. question. Yeah. Is there ever a situation where you do have to use antibiotics with these? We produce about 4,000 young pigs a year, and on that lot, five or six individual pigs might get an antibiotic treatment in a year. There are times, both in animal medicine and in human medicine, when we really do need our antibiotics, and they are very precious. We must look after them.